Hi, I know this feels like an intro at this point because I say it so often, but I've been living in the UK for over five years. I say it like that because usually it has to do with the subject matter, especially like the subject of this video. It makes sense, but also it is a bit of an accomplishment for me. If you've been watching me for over five years, you'll know it hasn't been always just the sunshine and the rainbows, okay? Usually around February, every single year without fail, there's issues with me staying in the country and it becomes stressful and then I'm like, I don't know what to do. Whether that's a company that I work for like going under and me having to find a new sponsor or me having to change jobs and having to change visa status and it's so stressful and ah. However, uh, last year or about a year and a half ago, I got a different visa and everything has been fine for the most part and I've just been patiently waiting to move on to the next stage of the visa process. However, this February, the hiccup on the road was a positive one. God, or rather, the Queen threw me a bone. They updated the immigration law in January this year that means someone like me can apply to settle indefinitely in the UK early. <laughs> If you're unaware, if you're trying to move to the UK permanently, usually you have to work for at least five years under strict visa conditions, and then you can apply to settle or live indefinitely in the UK, or just live for 10 years in the UK, whichever one is easier, or probably harder from the home office's standpoint. However, due to the update in immigration law, someone with my special visa status of tier one means that I can apply after only three and I've been working for four. Woo, that means I can apply early. So I began to do my research on how to live in the UK permanently. Settlement is basically like the final boss for a migrant. Like they've been spending years and years battling all these baddies and visa statuses. But now after five, it's time to beat the big man, Settlement. And the fun fact is even after you beat Settlement and you get the indefinite leave to remain in the UK, which means you can live and work and play and do whatever you want in the UK for as long as you want without visa status, you still haven't finished yet because you don't even know the final boss's final form. That's citizenship. That's where I have to get on my knee and I have to pledge allegiance to the queen. I, you know, that's an actual thing. Like I, I have to say, I will save her. I will keep her safe. She's got my allegiance, man, which is really cool when you think about it, but also like, wow, that's, <laughs> that is a big commitment. Like that's not just, you know, writing something on a paper, like, yeah, sure. I want to be British. That is a, that is a full commitment. And I'm excited to eventually get to that stage, which if you subscribe to me still, uh, I'll probably be updating you that in like what, a year and a half or so, provided nothing else goes wrong. However, indefinite leaves remain. That's what I'm going for now. I'm doing a lot of paperwork. I had to read an 86 page document and fill it out and go to a solicitor and all the other fun stuff. But the one thing that's unanimous across countries when it comes to migrants is the knowledge test. The test that shows, do you really know where you wanna live? Is this really where you wanna go? You gotta do, gotta do a lot of memorization, okay? A lot of memorization. Now I've made videos about the citizenship test in the past. Most of them have been comical. For instance, I made a video on Che's channel like a year or two ago. And, American takes the British citizenship test. I mean, it was just a joke. It wasn't real. His questions were things like, who, who are the Spice Girls? And I'm like, I don't know, posh, baby, sex. I don't know. Okay, that's not really that relevant. However, this one is legit, okay? Hashtag not clickbait. I'm about to take an actual practice exam. Am I gonna take this with low effort? Absolutely not. I take this very seriously. This is my livelihood. I'm very excited to eventually become a citizen of the UK. And so, if you're unaware, the citizenship test is based on a book called Life in the United Kingdom, a guide for new residents. Third edition from the home office. Now I have read this book thoroughly during my commutes and I'm halfway through reading it a second time. Before finishing it the second time, I decided why don't I take a practice exam for YouTube? Now before you go running out to your nearest Waterstones to pick up your copy of Life in the UK, I'm gonna spoil it for you. I, I really don't think you should read it unless you are legally obliged to. Uh, it's not the best book, but the, it is interesting. Some points I liked, some points I disliked. For instance, the book starts off in the Stone Ages. What? It, it, talking about hunter-gatherers and longhouses and, you know, I learned about this in fourth grade. Uh, I never thought I'd have to learn it again. Uh, I, I guess maybe I'm taking my education for granted and there's some countries that wouldn't learn about the basics of, like, human life on Earth? Who knows? Uh, maybe I could also say that the continuity is good, okay? They're like, you know, you started out in the, in the huts and now we got kings and queens battling. That's cool. I love history, by the way, and I do understand if you're moving to a country, you should know all the history. So I very much appreciated like War of the Roses, William the Conqueror, like King George, King Henry VIII, all that cool stuff. Yeah, it's memorizing facts and dates and things, but I quite enjoyed it. I quite enjoyed that a lot. There are some other cool things I found in the book, such as the chapter on the Shadow Council. The party that has the most seats in Parliament is declared the winner, and then they set up a Prime Minister, you know, Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Education, but what you may not know is that the losing party also has their own council, Secretary of Defense, Secretary, except they're the shadow, the shadow council. There's a shadow secretary, there's a shadow prime minister. Ooh, it just sounds really nefarious. That's so cool, I never learned about that ever. And now I'm gonna be thinking about like Sonic and Shadow the Hedgehog, you know, in parliament now. You'll never get my chaos emeralds, I'm the fastest. 
that's basically how the government works. Here. You can really tell the age of the author of this book, though, as so much of this is written as someone who's not even British, just kind of looking in to their own culture. Maybe it was written that way on purpose for people of other cultures, but the, the way it talked about social media, which was just very foreign, which was like, some people in the UK enjoy social media. They use Twitter, they use Facebook, to catch up with their friends. Uh, okay, uh, sure. Another strange part of the book talks about entertainment in the UK. How do British people stay entertained? Well, in Britain, they go out to places called nightclubs clubs, which are primarily open at night. I kid you not, that was in the book, and I I was just marveling at that, like, oh, nightclubs are open at night? I really hope that's on the test, because I'm gonna ace that, okay? I'm gonna be like, mm, nightclubs at night. What is it? It's a club at night. <laughs> a lot of the stuff in the book did seem like nonsense to me, and stuff that I really shouldn't have to know, such as famous British painters in the 18 to 1900s. Sure. And also famous film directors from England from like the 1930s. Why? Why, why does that? What? I doubt 99% of the British population could name me at least two of these painters that I have to memorize, but if that's on the test and we see this going forward, I'm gonna fail that bit, okay? Got me some slack. Now without further ado, I am going to take the test right now, and just so you're aware, I passed this test if I get 18 out of 24 of the questions right or more. Let's see how I can do. If you wanna play along, please, in the comments, leave me how many you got right. Let's go. Question number one, who is Queen Elizabeth II married to? I, I could have said Queen Elizabeth II. I'm fairly certain Queen Elizabeth the second is our current queen, and I do not know much about the marital affairs of the current family. I know there's princes and, and kings. I should know this more in detail, but I'm pretty certain out of these options, it's Philip. I, I just feel like Philip is the, is the current husband, right? We're gonna click that. I don't know if it's going to move on to the next question. I clicked it, yes, Philip. Oh, Philip was right. Boom! What is not a fundamental principle of British life? Driving a car, looking after the environment, treating others with fairness, or looking after yourself and your family. Driving a car is not a fundamental principle of British life. No one in London has a car. Let's just go with driving a car. Boom! Two for two, folks. I hope you're following along. This, this is a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Which flower is associated with England? The shamrock, the thistle, the rose, or the daffodil? Boy, I feel like I'm on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and I've got a stacked deck and I've read the answer. So we're gonna go with a rose. A boom! <laughs> when is St. David's Day? Now, I know that St. George is the patron saint of England, and I know that St. David, I'm fairly certain, is the patron saint of Wales. With the old Andrew up in Scotland and St. Patty, Patrick, coming up on the 17th of March. Oh, that's that option. Obviously not the 17th, but the 1st of March, St. David's Day, <gasps> boom! Representing Wales, okay? Wales, part of the UK, thank you for the answer. Let's go. Which of the following is part of the UK? Oh, this, okay, I was laughing, but we got Wales. Yes, the answer is Wales. Let's just, <laughs> Canada? Canada is my favorite part of the UK. Uh, Channel Islands. I mean, I believe that some of these options are part of what used to be the Empire, you know, which which is now part of the Commonwealth. But Wales, that's part of the UK. I really thought this was gonna be harder. Okay, this content was supposed to be challenging, such as the Che one with the Spice Girls. But we'll move on. Where was Robert Burns from? Here we go. Whew, I don't know who this is. Wales, Northern Ireland, Scotland, or. England. I'm gonna go with Scotland because old Robbie Burns sounds like a good Scottish name. Oh boy! We're just, we're, we're doing okay. When did the first Christian communities appear in Britain? Third and fourth centuries, first and second centuries, fourth and fifth. Oh my god, second, third. This is such a rough question. They're all so close to each other. Okay, so ideally, you know, Jesus' time was, you know, first century. I I'm pretty sure it's gonna be second and third. It could be third and fourth, but I'm gonna go with second and third. I think it took a bit of time to get to the UK. I I'm not really certain on this one. Oh, third and fourth. A rookie mistake, okay. Next, which two are British overseas territories? Do we have the Falkland Islands, Hawaii, <laughs> Ireland, or St. Helena? Now, I know that Hawaii is a US state, so that's obviously not it. Now, I have to just pick two of these. Uh, Ireland is not an overseas territory. Um, I'm pretty sure that's quite offensive as an answer, so I'm going to pick the Falkland Islands and St. Helena. Check it, boom. 
No dabbing in the UK. Sorry. What palace was a cast iron and plate glass building originally erected in Hyde Park, London, England, to house the Great Exhibition of 1851? Whew. Okay. We have the Gold Palace, the Dream Palace, the Crystal Palace, or the Great Palace. Now, I know that Crystal Palace is a stop on the underground, and it's nowhere near Hyde Park. It's quite south, and you don't want to go there. I believe that was for a different type of exhibition. Don't really think that's it. Unless it was erected in Hyde Park, and then they moved it to the current location, but pretty sure that's not it. I do not know the answer to this. I'm going to be very honest. I'm going to go with the Great Palace, because Gold and Dream sound a bit fake. Mm. Oh, God, it was Crystal Palace. Wow, so it was built in Hyde Park. That's really annoying, because the Crystal Palace is the only one that I recognized out of these, so... My mistake. Didn't know it was erected in Hyde Park, though. I learned something today. Should have known that. Who was the first Briton to win the Olympic gold medal in 10,000 meters? Oh god, I was really cocky at first. I don't know what I was thinking. David Ware, Mo Farah, Sir Chris Hoy, or Bradley Wiggins. Now, Wiggins is a lovely British name. I'm not gonna mock the Wiggins. However, Sir Chris Hoy, he's got Sir there, and I feel like if you were the first person to win an Olympic gold medal in 10,000 meters, you're gonna be a Sir, right? You're gonna be knighted. I'm gonna go with the Sir option. If you knew this, don't lie to me, okay? You tell me what you're picking in the comments for this one. This one's difficult. Sir Chris Hoy, mm. no, it's Mo Farah. Man, I was so far away from the correct answer. I wasn't, it was right there. Gosh, dang it, Mo Farah. Ooh, making Mo mistakes, let's go. Which two British film actors have recently won Oscars? This should be easy. For someone that cares about film, I don't really. Uh, Colin Firth, uh, he's a good one. Uh, Tilda Swinton, Leonardo DiCaprio, didn't know he was British. Uh, Jackie Stewart, don't know who that is. So I gotta pick two. I'm definitely picking Colin Firth. We're gonna throw him in there. And the next one for me is a toss up. I'm really, I'm gonna be honest. It's either Jackie Stewart or Tilda Swinton. Uh, I can't believe that this is, this is the test, but we're, we're gonna do it. I don't know, I've never heard of any of these two, any of these names besides Leonardo. I'm gonna go with Tilda. Oh! Boy! Thank God, I was getting real scared there. Who built the Tower of London? Londoners, obviously. Options, Henry VIII, Henry VII, William the Conqueror, or Oliver Cromwell. I don't think it's Cromwell. I'm gonna put that out there. I know some things about Cromwell. I don't think he built this. Uh, I don't think it's Henry VIII. I know he used it a lot, so which makes me think either William the Conqueror, who did, no, I'm gonna go with Henry VII. Oh, it was William the Conqueror, darn it! Don't damn, don't damn, don't damn. Not doing good, folks. At this point, we've got eight correct, and we've got Four incorrect. I'm still two for one, but that's not good enough, okay? We need, we need to step up the pace here. Where is Cenotaph located? Skyrim? What? Trafalgar Square, Dorset, Whitehall, or Wiltshire? Yikes. Cenotaph is definitely not Trafalgar Square. I, I, it can't be. It can't be. That's London. Dorset, beautiful area. Is that where the Cenotaph is? Whitehall? I don't think Jack has anything to do with Cenotaph. And then we have Wiltshire. I'm gonna think it's either Dorset or Wiltshire. Process of elimination here. I feel like Dorset needs more love. It's gonna be Wiltshire, isn't it? Mm. Oh, it's Whitehall! Yikes! Okay, this is actually not good. Obviously, I'm gonna have to read this entire book again, right? There's also a lot of practice quizzes, just so you're aware. There's like eight, 18 different versions of this. So I'll be doing multiple of these throughout the week just to make sure I've got all of the possible answers correct. But at this point, if I get one more incorrect, I think, I think I fail. That's not good. That's not good. Roast beef is a traditional food in which country? <laughs> if I fail because of roast beef, what is it? Irish people like corned beef. Scotland likes haggis. Roast beef. England likes roast beef, right? We all like roast beef. Why has it got to be an individual country? Come on. England. Oh, thank God. Thank you, England, for supporting roast beef. I was just like, what, what a question. What a beautiful question. What created the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland? The Act of Union? The Great Union? The Great Governments, or the Act for the Governments. I'm gonna go with either the top two. The Act of Union or the Great Union. It's gotta be one of those. I'm gonna go with the Act of Union. Oh, okay, okay. It's so, why did I have to get so many wrong initially? You know, it's, should've taken my time a bit. Which charity works to preserve important buildings? The NSPCC, the National Trust, the Red Cross, or Age UK. Now, luckily as a YouTuber, every YouTuber's doing spawns with different charities, and I'm pretty sure Luke has worked with the NSPCC, he's my roommate, the National Trust. Uh, he also has worked with Age UK and the Red Cross. So hypothetically, I should really know this answer. It's definitely not Age. Okay, Age UK work with uh, senior citizens and stuff. Red Cross is usually for charity work when people are uh, disasters and need help like that. NSPCC, I think has to do with the protection of children. Uh, I'm gonna go with the National Trust. 
Thank you. God save the Queen, everyone. God save the Queen. The UK government hasn't used the power to suspend the Northern Ireland Assembly. That's not true. That's not true at all. Yeah. yeah. They've done that a couple times. It's not been the nicest thing to do. What did the Chartists campaign for? The right to vote for the working class, the right to vote for the 21 year olds, the right to vote for women, or the right to vote for 18 year olds. Uh, I know there was a big deal about how originally the right to vote was just for wealthy landowners. I think they had to do with that one. So that's gonna be the working class. I'm just gonna go ahead and, I mean, honestly, if I get one more wrong, I'm not wrong anyway. Okay, 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 we're, we're pulling through. Skin of my teeth here. When is Christmas Eve? <laughs> okay, we're just gonna give this one a 24th of December. We're, we're good, we're good for that one. Uh, thank you, I appreciate this quiz. You know, you got me stressing out and then we got Christmas Eve. Which flag has a white cross and a blue background? Yet again, thank you. This one, I got gotcha. you. My boy Scotty up top, Scotland. Scotland's all about the blue and the white, okay? We're going with Scottish, boom. Don't even have to ask many questions about that one. What is the capital of England? Thank you, Queen Elizabeth. You've shown your grace upon me. The capital of England, I think it's London. Yeah, it's London. I love that. Which of these is a famous classical music event in the UK? Glastonbury, some would call it classical music. Creamfields, the proms, or tea in the park. Now I've been to tea in the park. That is a festival that I don't think is around anymore and it took place in Scotland. That was a bit of a rave, okay? So it's either Creamfields or the proms. This is gonna be a 50-50 for me. The proms, I feel like I'm swinging towards the proms, but Creamfields sounds pretty classic. Down to the minute, this is the one I'm gonna mess up on after all the easy ones. I'm gonna go with the proms. <laughs> okay, okay, we can do it, folks. Which of these UK landmarks is in Wales? Loch Lomond, Snowdonia, the Lake District, or Giant's Causeway? It's Snowdonia. I know this. Snowdonia is a big, like, national park, right, up in in North Wales. It's beautiful. It, 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 we're gonna go with Snowdonia. <sighs> Folks, it's come down to this. I honestly thought I'd fail as soon as I got my initial five wrong. And here we go. Who appoints life peers? The final question. The monarch? The prime minister? The shadow cabinet? We talked about this, the shadow cabinet. Or the speaker? life peers. Now I'm pretty sure the concept of a life peer has to do with as you're a, a lord, you're in the house of lords, you get to like enact and say this is your peer, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Editor Evan, what do you think? Oh, interesting. Well, it's come down to this. It's time to answer. I wish I could phone a friend right now. I don't know if a friend could help me, honestly. 50-50 would be my best option. Oh, I'm gonna go with the prime minister. I'm gonna go with the prime minister. Oh, it was the monarch! Life peers are appointed by the monarch at the advice finish test. <gasps> oh, I passed the test! I thought that was my sixth! That was my sixth wrong, that's 18! I can... I, I can live in the UK! It's not real, obviously, this was a practice test, but... That just shows me I need to practice a little bit more before I spend, you know, drop 50 pounds on the test, the actual test, but... That was an example, that was a practice test. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Oh my gosh, my heart's pumping. I can't believe I did it. Oh, okay. Hopefully, when I take the actual test in uh, this month or next month, it'll have a similar result. Hopefully a bit higher of a score. Thank you very much for watching. Tell me below how you got it, and uh, subscribe to stay in touch with this journey. I'll update you, like I said, in a month or and a half and tell you how I did. Oh man, this is exciting. I don't know. I'm like pumped full of energy. Anyway, like I said, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Check out my last video if you want. It's fun, fun German stuff. English or German. Yeah. I don't know. See you later. Goodbye.